on. Oh, there we are. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, good morning, Calvary family here and online. Um, if you're visiting with us this morning, we just, uh, whether you're online or in the sanctuary, we welcome you this morning, and we trust that uh, you will leave this place uh, today um, filled and, and uh, refreshed and rejuvenated and uh, ready to face the week, whatever that looks like for you. Um, first of all, is this not a glorious season? The leaves are just amazing. So if you're leaving today and you want to drive all the way to the end of Hawksville Road, you don't have to go very far to see beauty. Uh, yesterday we were um, up around Owen Sound, my husband and I, and uh, I was on sensory overload by the time we got back. Everywhere we looked, it was just just spectacular and uh, gorgeous. So it was a beautiful day to be out. We have a bike, so um, we, uh, we stayed off gravel roads yesterday, which I'm always grateful for. And we like to take back roads, and it was just, the, the leaves were just spectacular. So we, we live in a very good season right now um, of beauty. So I hope you uh, get to enjoy that and appreciate that. So this morning, I'm just going to... Um, uh, go through some announcements, and um, we have prayer this morning. There will be somebody um, for those here in the sanctuary. Um, there will be somebody in the ministry room beside Drew's office, and we will also have online Zoom prayer this morning, so you can take advantage of that. And offering, the links are below on, on um, the uh, website, and uh, we also have a box at the back, so if you want to slip something in there, um, that is greatly appreciated as well. And I just want to, um, uh, I just want to give a little note of gratitude to Terry uh, during this time, who has been so uh, diligent to uh, keep us on track and uh, to inform um, the leadership um, of our financial situation and also he puts updates um, in the Calvary Connects and probably on our website. So, um, Terry, thank you so much for that. So, Lighthouse, um, for, for our kids this morning, um, a little different format. And um, uh, the gym is set up with stations this morning. And we would encourage uh, you as not just kids, but as a family... Uh, to check that out. Uh, there's activities in there that you can bring back to the pew, work on, and, and take back out again. Kelly is going to be there this morning, and she will walk you through um, all of that uh, process. But we really want to encourage you not just to, um, you know, usually the kids go out um, uh, at offering and come back and come back in at the end of the service, but we would just want to invite uh, you to have the freedom to to come and go and pick up activities. We also at the back have an encouragement center, so there's lots of people in our church family who need encouragement during this time. So we and would love to hear from our kids. So and anyone else. So if you would like to pick up um, one of those, the instructions are in there on how to encourage. Um, uh, especially the seniors in our in our congregation at this time. I must say, though, um, just a shout out to our seniors who are a hearty bunch. Um, we've been keeping in touch with them um, by telephone over these last few months, and I would say they are doing remarkably well. And it has been a blessing to uh, call them and chat with them and just um, hear what's going on in their lives and. Uh, um, they they have been a great encouragement to me. So um, I just want I just am very grateful for our senior population in our in our uh, church family. Uh, this week, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, um, six thirty uh, more is on Facebook. Thursday we have been meeting in the park. So uh, last week we met in the park, and of course by about twenty after seven it's getting dark. So um, we're going to do a little bit different format this Thursday. We will meet at the bottom of the hill on, on north side. Uh, we'll park down there. Uh, we'll pray together as a group. And then I think the um, uh, focus will be to just walk through the village, whether you want to do that on your own or in pairs, and ask God for a business, a home, whatever, to, um, that he highlights for you, and, uh, and just to spend a few moments praying in that area. So the format's going to look a little different. So bottom of the hill, still at 630, 
not in the park. And um, Angie, I'm going to invite Angie up. Angie has an announcement for our church family this morning. I'm not sure. Oh, there I'm on. Um, so I'm here on behalf of the Ministry and Personnel Committee this morning, and it's, it's not bad news, so I just want to clear the air for that. Um, this is something that actually has been in the works for over a year, um, and uh, so I just want to let you know that over a year ago, Dave approached um, the MMP committee and the board about taking a sabbatical and we have graciously want to honor Dave with that sabbatical leave. So um, Dave is going to be taking a sabbatical for six weeks. It will start on October 12th until November 23rd. Um, so it is six weeks. Like I said, it's been in the works for a year. Um, and just want to sort of make everyone's fears and worries go away that that doesn't mean he's leaving us. Um, it's just, it is a time for Dave to get some rest, some insight, some renewal. Um, and Dave is such a big part of our leadership here at Calvary. And we are so blessed by having him lead us in worship um, and, and his teachings. And so we just really want to honor Dave with these six weeks away from us. And like I said, it will start um, on October 12th. So he'll, Dave will be here for Thanksgiving. That will be his last Sunday, and then he'll be away for six weeks. Um, and stay tuned, uh, because Dave is also a great help. And he's helping us um, with a plan, putting a plan in place for a worship leader. So stay tuned for further details on that. But Dave, we just want to bless you as you have these next few weeks with us and, and prepare for your sabbatical. So. Thank you, Angie. So before we head into worship this morning... Um, God's been putting a couple of things on my heart this week. And um, so I had two things this morning, and I said to God, what, which, what do you want me to say this morning? So I'm sensing that they're both to be said this morning uh, for our church family. So I don't know about you, but um, I'm hearing a lot of voices lately. I'm hearing a lot of instructions lately. Um, I'm a little confused sometimes about what is truth and what is not. And so um, God reminded me um, what Jesus said in Matthew and in Luke when asked the questions, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus says, you must love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor. And in a season where there seems to be so much um, of the opposite of that, um, I was I, as I was reading that, I, I, I was reminded that Jesus didn't say, agree with your neighbor. He didn't say, argue with your neighbor if you disagree. He didn't say, fix your neighbor. He said, love your neighbor. And the second thing, um, at, on Monday night... Um, at our uh, study group, we've started, uh, we've picked up where we left off back at, before COVID. And the verse that we settled on Monday night, which has really impacted us as, as a, a group of women, especially in times where things are a little unsettled and uncertain, is from Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord your God is with you. The New Living Translation says, the Lord your God is living among you. So he's here today. He's not far off. He's here. He is mighty to save. The Amplified Bible says he's a warrior who saves. He's got your back. He'll fight for you. He will take great delight in you. And the Amplified says he will rejoice over you with joy. 
He will quiet you with his love. The New Living Translation says, with his love, he will calm all your fears. And he will rejoice over you with singing. I said to the girls on Monday night, how amazing is that, that the God of the universe makes all these promises in scripture. He delights in us. He will quiet us with his love. He'll calm our fears. And that he sings over us. Like, doesn't he have better things to do? (laughs) There's a lot going on in our world. But he sings over us. He rejoices over us. And he is with us. So this morning, um, I I would encourage you to um, take that verse this week. And uh, when you're feeling a little unsettled and uncertain, to reflect on those words that God is for you, he loves you, he rejoices over you, he sings over you, and he is with you. So let's pray together. Father God, I just want to thank you for these precious words, these words of assurance, these words of hope, these words of confidence. God, and I just pray over our our community our community here, our community online, our communities where we live, that, God, we will be your salt and light. We will carry your hope. We will carry your love, your confidence. Wherever we find ourselves this week. And, God, would you show us how to love our neighbor? God, you, Jesus, you modeled that so well. In, in the Gospels. Your life was love. And God, we long for that. Our world so needs that. So as we lift our hearts and our voices and our minds to you this morning, God, would you just fill us with your peace? Would you fill us with your joy? And would you fill us with your love? In Jesus' powerful and precious name, Amen. Bed. Amen. That was good. Well, good morning, everyone, once again. Uh, good, to, good to be in worship uh, in, in whatever that looks like. Um, we had a chance to begin to honor Dave and, and uh, honor him for what he does. I, I want to honor a few other people this morning. Um, if you were here between quarter after nine and 10 o'clock in the building, you would have seen a frantic few of us, but not frantic at the same time. Um, Technology, once again, and internets, and who knows what the the issue was. But I just want to honor our media, a tech team, um, Andrew, Dan, Steve. They are just continue time. And after again, Andrew came in all feeling like, I'm good this morning. We got this figured out. And I'm feeling like we got a good system going. And then the wind or internet or who knows, Rogers. We'll blame it on Rogers this morning. Uh, and we weren't sure if we can get a live stream out. And just the, the wisdom of Dave and, and this team. So once again, let's just honor them. So if Most of you are like, oh, I didn't notice. I showed up. I turned on my screen. We're good to go. But so, uh, so just so grateful uh, for how people in this house go. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna serve God in in what He's, uh, the gifts He's given me, the skills He's given me, the passions He's given me. And thank God that there are people who are passionate about gigabytes and wires. And Kelly always says they speak Greek in some of our meetings, and I don't. And so, uh, and so, again, just want to take that opportunity for, to stir that up. You've been hearing us. I feel like I'm a broken record, but it's, it's something that we're just so passionate about that if you want to continue to draw closer to God, if you want to continue to draw closer to this community, to one another, it's about drawing closer to who God has called you and what he's called you to do. And everyone has a unique, powerful kingdom assignment, whether that is um, doing tech at the back of the church or uh, serving at DTK on Tuesday nights or what you do in your workplace and how you interact with your colleagues um, as you figure out how to parent out of a kingdom mindset. Those are, those are unique assignments And we just want to once again encourage you to keep exploring, digging, running after who God has called you to be and what he's called you to do. Um, Another group of people that I want to honor who 
um, spent some time doing that this weekend was our board. Uh, we gathered together as staff and the board uh, of this, this church uh, Friday night, all day Saturday, and we did what we've been calling um, this new initiative, the running group. And so we were able to lead um, the leaders through this. And you might think, well, they're their board. They, aren't they already running? They figured it all out. We're all in this journey of wanting to press in even more. And so it was just so beautiful. So um, if you're a board member sitting at home, you get to raise your hand. If you're a board member here, raise your hand. And we want to honor you. We want to thank you. For, for uh, giving, not, not giving up, but for investing this weekend for yourself. Because as you get bigger, we get bigger as a community. And as you pursue as, uh, as forerunners and leaders and shepherds and elders of this house, then we as a community get to go further, deeper, broader. So we want to honor, we want to thank you. And as a community, we need to continue to pray for our leadership, for us as staff, uh, for, for the board, for the different leaderships in different spaces and places. And so, so thank you. I know we posted that on social media and, and got lots of engagement on that. And so I do hope that you will continue to, to pray. And it was just so exciting, once again, to just see as people kind of take some steps, and maybe sometimes you just feel like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to take a little tiny step into this. Or if you're feeling, oh, I want to take a leap into this. As we head into a time of offering, I want just close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to, again, picture yourself. We're going to use the, you know, you know I love running. Nope. But that's the, <laughs> that's the image that God keeps presenting for us. And so so picture yourself at the front of a, of, a, of a lap. And I don't know what the lap of your last week or couple weeks has been. I think of parents and teachers, and you're like, whoo, I need a breather. Or if there's something been going on in your heart and life, and that's what's beautiful about gathering together. That's what's so important about church because it's a time where we get to pause and drink and encourage and spur one another on. It's, it's that Gatorade station. But here we are, and there's another lap ahead of us. And I want you to think, what's another step that I can take to continue to pursue, to continue to move, to continue to step in who God has called me to be? Because that's not just about... Dave or the tech guys or the, the official board of this church for us as staff, that is for all of us. We get to all continue to step into run after. And that step this morning, this week for you might be, I need to find my rest in him. I need to find a place where I can place my anxieties. And so a step this morning might be trusting your heavenly father with the anxieties that are on your heart. Maybe there's a person that he is putting on your heart and mind that you get to encourage, that you get to have a conversation with. Maybe someone that you need to reconcile with. Maybe there's something that you get to start diving into whether it be at your workplace or here at church. Maybe it's about reaching out to someone and saying, hey, they've been talking about this Luke thing and I think we're supposed to read it together. Can we chat about that? Can we text each other? Can we... These are all... I'm trying to paint this picture that running after God doesn't always have to be these extravagant laps. It's one step, one step, one step, one step. So God, as we pause for a moment, as we continue to explore who you are through the gospel of Luke, God, we know it's not just some far off, distant, disconnected thing. It is about partnership. And you are calling us, you are releasing us. And so God, bless our steps this morning. 
we want to offer ourselves, we want to offer, whether it's a, a, a tiny step or a, a huge stride forward, we want to offer ourselves to you once again. We give you our yes. We give you our, okay, I'm going to try this. And as we pause to offer, whether it be financially, whether it be this morning when we click where we put something in the box in the back, from our finances to our talents to our abilities to our passions, we once again say, God, we want to keep moving. We want to move into your rest, into your comfort. We want to move into your healing, yes, but we want to run into who you've called us to be. And thank you, God, that we don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have it all together. You take us as we are. God, we hear your whispers and invitations this morning. Amen. So Drew is at home, uh, not due to COVID, due to, a, due to a cold today. And so out of an abundance of precaution, uh, Drew has recorded a message for us that we get to share in together uh, live this morning, uh, here and at home. Uh, but let's just quiet our hearts. So God, would you, open the, would you open our minds and our hearts this morning for the words you have for us? God, you declare that your word does not return to you empty. And so, God, in eagerness, we wait for the words you have for us this morning. And, God, would you rain blessing down on Drew today. Uh, thank you, God. We are so blessed to have him uh, as teacher, preacher, pastor in our midst. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Just for a minute, um, think back, just ask God for a minute to let you look back on your life. God, where were you working in my life? Where were you calling out to me, seeking out for me, trying to meet me when I was running after other things? When I was... Uh, really little, I had multiple times where I experienced the God feeling near, like when I was little at Sunday school, when I was in, in bed with malaria, and God, re reading scripture was the only thing that would comfort me. But time after time, I would, you know, have these moments of God, and then just kind of forget it, or let it slide away. Until I reached a kind of feverish pitch in my high school years where I had been to camp a few times and a number of times I felt like, oh, people have this relationship with God that I don't have. And eventually there was a point lying out under the stars at Silver Lake Camp and crying out, God, if you're there, where are you? Think back in your own life. Were there times where you felt the presence of God, where you felt that there was something more that was kind of reaching out for you? Sometimes I think about when I was a kid, we used to play on our street. A whole, we had a whole ton of kids that we would play at night, um, uh, you know, like kick the can and those kind of things, and hide and seek. And there was always somebody who was dead, and eventually they would give up searching for people, and they would yell, all ye, all ye, income free. And that, I think, is what God has been saying from the beginning of Scripture and seeking us out, and so much so that he sends his son, Jesus, to come and say, here I am. And in all of these experiences, it is God drawing close to you, drawing close to me, and saying, hey, I'm right here. Let me rescue you. And then this beautiful thing that not only does he rescue us from the stuff that has had has trapped in the past. But he says, let me show you a new way. A beautiful thing happened yesterday, um, and it's been happening over the, over the last months as well. But la yesterday and Friday, the board met together. And they set aside time as, as the leadership of this church 
to walk through this process we've been, I don't know, calling the running group, which is really asking the question, what is God calling you to run after? Because God is actually running ahead of you saying, I have so much for you, not only to experience, but so that you can be with doing things with me. And so what is God calling you to run after? What's your next step? What's your next move? And they gathered on Friday night and thought about all the things that people had prayed over them. They thought about all the things that, that um, God had been do, doing in their lives, the times that they had seen God work in their lives. And, and they said, well, you know, when, when I consistently see God working in this way in me, to start to line up, God has been saying these things, God has been doing these things, to find me, to reach me first of all, and then to lead me into all that he has for me. That is so beautiful that our leadership would do that. And that other groups have met in the last few months uh, doing the same thing, where God takes us exactly where we are and says, I have so much more for you. It's a little bit like filling a car with gas and suddenly has, you know, it was made uh, or like to drive, but until the gas is in it, it can't go. Like God is wanting to fill you up. And when you click on the ignition and suddenly you go, oh, I was made for this. A car would say, I was made to drive. A 13-year-old boy filling himself with food would say, oh, I was made for junk food. Whatever it is, when God lines up his heart for you and who you are with his spirit, then you have this, oh, I was made for this. And that's what God has for each of us. We've been looking at Luke, and I want to look at Luke 4 today. But the reason I want to look at Luke 4 is because you get this picture of not only does Jesus do that with his disciples, calling his disciples together, he models the heart of God to do that for all of us. I want you to see that when we're looking at Jesus today, and all through this book of Luke, that when you look at what Jesus does, it's a model, first of all, of how God is pursuing us. And second of all, what God has for you and me, that God is saying, I'm inviting you into this. You were made for this. So open up your Bibles to Luke 4. I'm going to just look on my iPad, if that's okay. And, uh, and you, maybe you have it on your phone. Maybe you want to bring your Bibles to church. I should note, I'm at home today preaching because... I got a bit of a sore throat a few days ago, just making sure that we're following all the guidelines. You know, I'll be tested and I'm totally feeling really good now, so I'm quite confident that it's nothing more than just the September. My wife says, kindergarten teacher, you pick up things, you know? So, I'm from home. If you're at home, go find your Bible, open it up. If you're here in the pews, then open up the Bible. But we want to together look at Luke See how Jesus is modeling for us the life that he, we have waiting for us and have him highlight something specifically for you and me today. Let's pray and then read Luke 4. God, I am so excited about what you want to do in us today. You are calling us home. You are calling us to step back in line with what you are doing. You've been seeking us out in more ways than we are even aware of. And right now, today, we want to have our ears open to hear you, our eyes open to understand, and draw close to you, Jesus. You have been faithful to us all our lives. And so we are just praying that you would help us to see the steps you have for us, for all that you have. And we pray in Jesus' name. So, if you want to just go to Luke 4, I want to start with verse 17 and 18 and 19 for, for just a minute. Maybe just quickly before that, look at Luke, Luke 1, verse 4, verse 1. It says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. Jesus had just been baptized, and I love how the Passion Translation says it. It says, from the moment of Jesus' baptism, Jesus was overflowing with the Holy Spirit. 
God fills Jesus up with his spirit. And, and Jesus values the connection between him and God so much that, that it overflows into the people around him. Now, just quickly, as we're going to whip through this a bit today, but you look that the Holy Spirit's first thing to do is to lead him into the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. When we're full, God takes him and leads him, and the one step that he leads him into is being tempted to being challenged by by the enemy uh in and if you unpack it some more all of the things that the devil tempts jesus with are the things that god has promised jesus will be that the nations will bow to him that he will be the bread of life that feeds others that he will have all the angels coming to to minister and work through him that all things will honor and serve jesus and he will do miraculous things the enemy tries to tempt him with these things, but Jesus values the connection between him and God, being filled with the Spirit, and so continually says, no, that's not for me, because God has those things in store for me. God has things in store for you and for me, and sometimes that will lead us into a time of temptation so that we can clarify and remind ourselves that we, we stay connected to God Hear what God is saying, and the other temptations don't meet it. If you mess up and you chase after something else, ask forgiveness because Luke reminds us again and again, he is a God of mercy who meets us exactly where we are. Then Jesus, finishing with the temptation, ministered to by angels, which is so beautiful, then he returns and begins his ministry. Reports spread about him everywhere. People are being healed just by being around him. Remember, he's overflowing. He teaches in the synagogues and people speak highly of him. That the people are recognizing there is something pouring out of this man that is more than, that is heaven coming to earth. Again, just so we get it clear, Jesus deliberately limits himself to live life like us, a man or woman on earth, saying, God, I want to follow what you have for me. Now, Jesus didn't sin, so he didn't have the habits and, and uh, temptations that we have in the same way because he knew how to say no. But he's inviting us into that same lifestyle of, God, you're f filling me up and my heart is overflowing, and I see somebody, and I'm going to go and meet with him. On God's heart is reconciling us to him and pouring that out on others. That's just how his heart is. So filled with the Holy Spirit, then he goes back, and now we get to that verse. Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus says. He's reading from Scripture that's been handed to him, standing with his hometown around him for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor anointing is a pouring of oil on someone's head it was used in the old testament to anoint a king when they became when they were crowned a king they first poured oil on them as a sign that god's spirit is now choosing you and filling you with his power to model what a king looks like when jesus is standing up and reading this he is saying I am being anointed to be this kind of king. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He rolled up the scroll and said, This scripture has just been fulfilled this very day. Jesus released to ministry means that God is drawing the deaf and the blind and the captives and the outcasts and the oppressed and the poor and saying, it's for you. Come and be restored, be reconciled. The things, people that feel broken and left out, 
it's for you. People that feel uh, blind and can't see spiritually or even physically be healed and restored, or you can't hear and you don't think that God is speaking anymore, it's for you. For you who feel locked in a prison, Jesus says, I am here to set you free. That's what God, pouring His Spirit in me and overflowing, is doing. This is what God's kingdom looks like. This is what God has for you, and this is what God has for me. Jesus says this at the beginning of his ministry, but then he models it. He just goes out and does it so that he, it's like show and tell. Here's the truth, here's the lesson, and here's what it looks like. So let's just walk through this a little bit, but as, as I do, again, think about the times in your life when you maybe were feeling blind or like you couldn't hear or that God wasn't hearing you. Maybe you felt locked up and trapped. Maybe you felt oppressed by something. Maybe you felt poor, that you just couldn't have enough. God said to you every time he was reaching out to you in the past and today, it's for you. This is, and this version says that the time of the Lord's favor has come. The original was, it is the year of Jubilee. Jubilee meant all debts forgiven. It was an Old Testament practice. All debts forgiven. People were free. Slaves were set free. Everybody released and everything got a fresh start. That's what he has for you. All ye, all ye, income free. Come on home. Come back. Let's Let's be restored. Let's all be together and then see what God will do. The way we know what God is like is how Jesus models. Jesus is perfectly revealing here God's heart for you and me. So let's just quickly kind of walk this through. Let's just flip through this. Jesus is teaching and everybody's amazed. First of all, that's amazing. Jesus is teaches in the synagogues, and people are just overwhelmed and filled with awe just because he's telling truth in a way that they can hear. Maybe as you're reading scripture, you might want to say, Oh, Holy Spirit, teach me like that. I want to be held in awe as I read your word. Open it up to me. Help me to understand. And all the things, the preconceptions that I want to jubilee where I can start again, read your word, and it's going to speak to me. Look at this. Right after Jesus, um, Jesus does this, then his, his, he's rejected and challenged. He was tempted by the devil, and now his hometown rejects him. Sometimes when we choose to say we're going to follow, not everybody's going to treat us well in that. Not always are people are going to be happy about our choices when we start to change our lives. I remember when I first became a Christian, and I came home and I stopped doing a number of the things that I had been doing. And a number of my friends gathered around me one night um, at our basketball court. And they just sort of circled around me and they were kind of almost pointing their fingers at me, just saying, why, you know? And, and I remember just feeling overwhelmed. But Jesus says, it's worth it because what I have is better. This is the year of Jubilee. Fresh starts for everybody. And I wish I could say that I didn't cave, but it took me a couple of years to decide that what people thought was less important than what God thought. I pray for you and for me that we make that choice a lot quicker as we persevere. Jesus, his neighbors try to, uh, his family and friends and neighborhood tries to uh, throw him off a cliff because they feel like he's blaspheming. Jesus just walks right through. It's a miracle. Jesus is modeling, standing up for what is true, and God will protect us. Then he goes and casts out a demon. Then, so he's, remember like people being set free. Now think about, just like you were thinking about your own life. Think about what that man, that demon-possessed man was like. He comes to a synagogue. He's been struggling. Everybody knows that he's struggling and tormented. And suddenly Jesus, with authority, speaks to the thing that is tormenting him and saying, you can be free. And suddenly he is. 
what would it be like if our people, overflowing with the Holy Spirit, went out amongst our days, came across people that were tormented, and we're able to, with authority, because that's Jesus in us, say, you don't have to listen to that voice anymore. In Jesus' name, be gone. Then, look at this. Jesus heals many people. I'm looking at verse 38. He goes and heals his mother, mother-in-law. All through the Capernaum, people come that night, and everybody, no matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Keep going, he preaches, he, he goes and he does miracles providing fish for, for fishermen that catch nothing. And then he calls the disciples to follow him, fishermen who have no training, no reason to expect that the king of kings would say, you can follow me. And do you get this? All you, the demon possessed, the people who have, re- my neighbors who are rejecting me, the, the deaf and the blind, and the, the poor and the overlooked, all of you, come. Like this board on Friday and Saturday night, like the running groups before that, like you and me, God has been speaking to you. God has words for your life. Come. It's the year of Jubilee. You're, f- you're forgiven of your past. Jesus is going to cover that. And Jesus has a future for you. This is worth leaving everything. Go. Jesus preaches. He does this miracle of the fish. He comes across a leper, another outcast, and then reaches out to him and heals him. You see, like nobody, no matter what things might be standing in the way, are enough to stop Jesus from saying, No. Go. Your faith has made you well. You are clean. You get to start again. Remember how he says at the beginning, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, freedom for captives, open eyes of the blind, help people to see, the poor to know that there's good news, that God's favor has come, and then he demonstrates it. One day I hope that a friend of mine, Pastor James, um, it, one day I hope that he can come and speak to us. He's got this incredible testimony of he was, he was uh, uh, selling drugs on the street, he grew up rough, he had been in jail. And then one day a guy on the street, somebody who had struggled with alcoholism, comes up to me, tells him about Jesus, and something happens in, him in that moment that creates this longing to know this Jesus. And then Jesus sets him free. He went into the ministry, and now he's actually traveling around. I think they were in Ottawa yesterday, but they are traveling around trying to go and meet people like him years ago to tell them about Jesus. They're seeing people healed. They're seeing people give their lives to Jesus. They're seeing people with hope. This is what it looks like for his kingdom to come. Luke says that what Jesus is saying for him is true for you. I want you to understand, just quickly, uh, as we've walked through this, Jesus starts off saying, this is what it looks like to have the Spirit of God on you, to anoint you for something big, bringing his kingdom. He talks about it. He demonstrates it. And then within one chapter, please understand, Jesus starts his ministry. And within one one era of time, one very short amount of time, we're in chapter 4. Jesus then moves to chapter 5 and immediately starts calling people to follow him, disciples, to train and learn to do the same. 24, 25 chapters of a book. And within the first chapter of his ministry, the next thing that happens is he says, it's about you being gathered in and about more people doing it. And so the disciples get called. They get to see miracles. They get to take part in it. And that's what we're going to see in the next chapters. What it looks like for God to reconcile us to him. And what it looks like for you and I to say, okay, let me go and help me 
see other people reconciled in that too as well. Uh, one more thing before we just jump into the end here. I want us to understand as we read, look at Jesus and how he meets each of these people. To the leper who's been rejected, he touches him. To the demon who, demon-possessed man who's been uh, rejected and told he doesn't belong, Jesus takes authority and, and says nothing, even people being offended, is worth getting in the way. To the disciples, just regular people doing their work, having a bad day, Jesus says, your work matters to me. To people who come with lots of different needs of a night, to, to the home that he's staying in, every person he touched is made well. Do you see that coming to Jesus, he is here to say the year of Jubilee is here, and for you, and for me, and for the people we bring Jesus to, we already know how God chooses, is going to choose. He's going to be merciful. He's going to meet them. He's going to start to work in their lives. And as we start to learn how to be filled with his spirit, we will start to see that more and more. I keep hearing God say that this is what I'm calling Calvary into. People filled up with the Holy Spirit and overflowing with his mercy and love. Then God is going to raise people up, just like he raised up the disciples, who raise up other people. And then we are going to see this cascade of more and more people acting like Jesus, living like Jesus, having the heart of Jesus, touching people out in the neighborhood and beyond. I love it when we worship in St. Jacob's Park because our people are stepping out and at least being in a place in the town and saying, we love this Jesus. And one day we're going to have the courage to be going and talking to more people. But right now, Jesus is just saying, represent me where you are. We've used lots of images to convey this, this vision that God is raising up big people. God is raising up mighty people. But it's not really that. I love this image that Amy gave, uh, Gaiman gave me. She said, I keep seeing this image of a cupcake that, you know, you notice the sparkles on top and the icing. That's, that's the things that you notice, the people that seem to have rise up. But it's the cake beneath. That God is rising up people to raise up, raising up people to raise up people. The cake is what matters. So if you today feel like, oh, well, there are people that got called. The disciples got called, but lots of people. I'm, I'm one of those who would have missed out. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. He's made, he's said, this is my calling in why I'm here. The captives, the oppressed, the poor, the blind, the deaf, the ones who are on the outskirts, that is who he is calling. And he wants to free us up to call the same. Hmm. Jesus sees you. Jesus, from the beginning of time, loves you. And when he comes and he stands before you, when he was tempted, he and when he died, he died for you. He was tempted for you. He ministered for you. He modeled for you so that you and I would know he chooses me, just as I am, to follow. Like Jesus was, I wrote this this morning, like Jesus was from unexpected places, and like even in his hometown couldn't recognize what he carried. You, me, the people beside you, Jesus is saying, right now, you, you, you. You carry the keys to unlock the cap captives in prison when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. You can open the eyes of the blind literally, and spiritually. You can help the deaf hear, hear the voice of God. Pray for them. We will see wonderful, amazing things that are supernatural, but even in the natural, helping people to know the God of mercy, Jesus, comes to meet you. That's for us. 
And you might be saying to yourself, well, I'm poor in spirit. I don't know. Well, Jesus came for the poor to say, this is the year of favor. And it's not by our strength, by our goodness, like Zechariah said, like it says in Zechariah. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. God knows. Jesus models. And we get to find out that it's all about being filled to overflowing with his spirit and walking where he leads us, whether that's into the battle of temptation so that we can learn to stand, whether that's into uh, church and teaching people about the mercy of Jesus, whether it's into your neighborhood or your workplace. That's why we here kind of have our first priority is we want to worship and focus on the presence of God and we want to see people brought to reconciliation to know that Jesus forgives and loves and we can have a relationship with him we're not going to waver on that it's about us knowing we're free and forgiven but then we want to see those people who are feeling left out on the outskirts we want to see them meet Jesus too and see them fought, discover how God has equipped them and called them and see them released. I asked Amy to write me. She was uh, praying and heard these words and I asked her to write them to me because I feel like they kind of sum up what I'm saying here. She said, God is declaring this is a season of reconciliation. I'll just pause there and say the year of Jubilee. There is no relationship you cannot heal. We often perceive estrangement and betrayal as too great to overcome. But God says the bigger the mess, the more space he has to show up and work. Isn't that good? If the bigger the mess, the bigger God can say, oh, watch what I can do. And then she said, what he has been teaching me is that it begins first by simply coming to him. God redeems and restores in us to provide the foundation for reconciliation. Renewal, or to begin anew, are words I've had for myself and for others as I've prayed for this very issue. We need to get into the presence of God to hear the truth about our identity, letting go of what is holding us back from who he created us to be, and receive from him what we need to prepare the way for reconciliation. Maybe it's new perspective, help in forgiving, healing of past hurts, direction, hope for change, or peace. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus said, because he has anointed me to preach good news to you who are poor. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus says, to open the ears of the deaf and the eyes of the blind, to open your ears, to open your eyes, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me to release the captives. You've got caught up in something and you're trapped. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me to release you from your captivity. The Spirit of the Lord is on me to set free those who are oppressed and pressed down. He's the lifter of our heads. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me to declare that this is the season, the year, the epoch, the, the time of my favor. God is meeting you with favor today. And you see, each of us, when we bring whatever that thing is that the Spirit of the Lord is on Jesus for us, it becomes a testimony for us so that when we meet somebody in St. Jacob's or in our workplace, we can say, yeah, I was like that. I was this stupid kid who chased after being popular and trying to be liked and all of these things. But Jesus made me dissatisfied with what I was trying to get and started to show me that he was more and loved me more and had more for me. And that started me on a path of trying to love him and follow him. And 
the highlights of my life, the best moments of my life, the the significant things in my life, all are because of Jesus' Spirit filling me to overflowing so that I want to see it more. Each of us get a testimony from the things that we were tested with when Jesus meets us. I was blind, but now I see your testimony. I was lost, but now I'm found. It's your testimony. Jesus says, I'm inviting you in, not counting people's sins against them. Jesus died for you. So we're going to finish this with just praying this morning. Whether you're at home like I am, God is right here to meet you. Or whether you're in the pews, or whether you're watching this later, God is no not concerned about space or time. He is able to step in right now because he has been seeking you, calling out all you, all you income free. And today, bringing whatever it is that we have, getting reconciled with him so that he can fill us up to see others reconciled. You have a testimony to bring to someone else so they can be free. So who needs this morning? We're going to pray. Dave, if you want to start playing, that would be amazing. Who needs a jubilee? Who needs to hear today, God has favor waiting for me tomorrow and in this season. God is going to take the old and give me new. God is going to work to bring something new. If that's you, come for prayer. Would you... Stand up right where you are, or put up your hand, or, or just say, I need to go to the Zoom room for prayer, or the, or the office at the back by my, back my office for prayer right now. I need to email Drew and say, I need prayer. Whatever it might be, today, if you need a jubilee, come for prayer. Who has a heart for a person or a group that needs jubilee? Do you know somebody and you're going, oh, when I heard those words that there's forgiveness and a chance to start again, I thought of my friend. I thought of my family member. If you had that, come to the altar. Stand up. Go for prayer for them and say, God, I think, wants to help use me to help that person be free. Don't stop. Don't wait. This is the time of God's favor. Who wants more abiding turning and going, God, I need to start with you like Amy wrote. God, fill me up again. If you've been feeling dry, if you've been feeling like some your attention has been distracted by many other things, turn to God today. Go for prayer today. Come to the altar and say, God, here I am. Let people gather around you and pray for you because this is the day of God's favor. I release that for you at home, right where you are. You can go in the prayer and Zoom and say, one of those things stuck out to me. Would you pray for Jubilee for my friend? Would you pray for Jubilee for my family? Jubilee means a fresh start, every debt forgiven. God's saying it's my season of favor going forward. That's what Jesus is modeling, and he calls you and me to follow so that others can know. I'm going to release that now as we pray, and then we're going to wrap up. Holy Spirit, would you come on our homes, on our hearts? Would you fill us up to overflowing so that everything that we wasted our energy and time chasing after gets washed away? God, don't let us just keep that secret. Help us to talk with somebody about it so that you can receive the glory and that others can hear what you've done. But right now, this moment, you say that we are forgiven. You say that that you are giving us the key to unlock our own prison, to forgive that person that we've had trouble forgiving, to let go of regret and pain from the past, to say, God, I need help to overcome this thing that keeps me captive. I'm going to email a friend. I'm going to do this because I want to to have the freedom you have. God, I pray for those that we're going to bring 
to the altar and say, God, I've been praying for my spouse, I've been praying for my child, I've been praying for my neighbor, and see that God would heal and restore them. We're going to do this together because that's who God calls Calvary to be, raising up people filled with the Spirit, knowing our gifts and our strengths and going out and helping raise up other people, knowing that God's love and goodness. God, would you bless our church? Would you bless what we're saying to you today and help us to move forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's just uh, put our hands out as, a, as we um, will continue to sing another song and just to create some more space for you to both receive. It starts with that infilling of the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, Come. Come and fill us as your vessels. Fill us as we leave this place, as we leave and head into our days, into our workplaces. Holy Spirit, may we be releasers of jubilee. May we receive it for ourselves, and God, may we carry it to the people we encounter today and this week. Holy Spirit, come. Just pause in that moment. Just breathe him in. Holy Spirit, come. In Jesus' name, amen. Make sure you stay connected uh, in the different ways that we've provided. Our ushers will uh, let you know when you can head out. But if you want to stay uh, in your pew and worship for this last song, we encourage you to do so. Um, prayer in the ministry office in the Zoom room. Please, please, please reach out and, and ask for more prayer. Connect in. We don't get to do this alone. We don't need to do this alone. So the invitation is there. So have a blessed week, friends.